Episode 48, The Oath in the Tunnel. Oh yeah, Lanfine's epic appearance last episode. Damn! That new automail arm, though. Will you stop killing me? <laughs> what a thing to say. Is this gonna be the end of Gluttony? Why won't you just let me eat you already? Poor Gluttony. He just wants to eat everyone. He just can't understand. <laughs> You're really kicking ass. And there's some woman you got. I didn't know you were such a stud. I've been fighting her all this time. Well, you know, I'm full of surprises. That is definitely true. I love how they're like developing an appreciation for each other. They actually get along really well. Go figure. Now that I think about it, Ling is actually a great host for Greed because he wants. He wants a lot and he also has a lot. Interesting symbiosis they have now. Damn. Is it weird that I feel a little bit bad for Gluttony? He's just like a, like a big baby. The ruler of Xin controls the Qi, known as the Dragon's Pulse. This knowledge allows him to govern the flow of our kingdom. As the personal servants of our ruler, we too are trained to read the flow of Qi. Not only that, <laughs> we're also trained to act in the darkness. Thanks for the exposition. I recognize that voice. Yeah, it's the grandfather. There's another large Qi within the forest. That would Her be Pride. Is fighting a homunculus called Pride out there. Hmm. There's one more in the settlement nearby, and there's something disquieting about that one. It seems to dwarf the others in comparison. That's probably Ed's father. You think so? Whoa. Are you saying that your father isn't human? <laughs> That's a really cool touch having them reference Hohenheim's power like that, because we haven't really seen it. All we've seen him do is run from pride and then taunt him. <laughs> but that makes sense. He's the other half of father in a way, right? You don't have to worry about gluttony. Lanfan's dealing with him. Lanfan is fighting gluttony? It's crazy. <laughs> Hold on. It hasn't even been a full seven months since her auto mail was attached. <sighs> That's crazy, old man. She's not gonna last without help. I mean, she's doing fine. You gotta just trust in Lanfan. Why aren't the lights back? Hey! Get a lamp! Shout out to get a lamp guy. What all do you have besides explosives? Hmm? All sorts of things. Tear gas bombs, flash bombs, flares. <laughs> This is not enough. The hell do I have to do to make you stay dead? A lot more than just like knock him around. I hate you, Salim. They've got plenty of records showing that he was born and raised there, but I couldn't find a single resident who's even seen the Bradley family. Their mansion is just a hollow facade. I appreciate this, Madam Christmas. That is some good research from Madam Christmas. Easy to get this intel. Yeah. Yeah. Although, as soon as I found out Selim Bradley wasn't human, well, my exhaustion didn't seem to matter anymore. You find heroes in the most unlikely of places. <laughs> Never judge a book by its cover. Shane smoking, bar owning Madam Christmas is like the best intelligence spy of all time. Who's dedicated to the cause and who takes motivation from taking down the homunculi. Best character. I hope Roy is paying her a lot. He can pay her in flowers. How hasn't any of this gotten out before? Because he has a father named King, who happens to be the most powerful man in the country. They can hide anything they want. Fabricate anything. Right. I mean, it's like, people do know. That's the thing. It's just that so many people know that it almost doesn't matter. They just run things. You little bastard! Hey! Who is that? Oh, Someone no. You blew there? it. Does that get a lantern guy? Oh, no. It's got a kid. Oh, no. You don't know what we know. There's like a lion mulling a kid. Oh, well... He didn't need to use that angle, I guess. Two oh no, it's gonna catch fire! Well, there goes that. Goodbye, Chimera. Ultimate armor? Oh, it's just Ed. Ed armor. Just in the nick of time, Pops. <clears throat> Who would have thought a little kid like this could be a homunculus? I admit you fooled me. Yes. Celine I think most Bradley. of us were fooled. It's okay. Appearances rarely show the whole truth. It's such a great line, and damn if that isn't true for Salim. Appearances really can be deceiving, and what's kind of scary about that is that the deception is mostly internal, or like entirely internal. Like the show's been telling me this whole time that Salim is pride. One thing I thought a lot about that, you know, initially scared me a lot is like, you know the feeling when you discover 
a huge secret, like a mind-blowing secret about someone, that's just the surface that you're seeing. Imagine how many of those you're not seeing, you know what I mean? And thinking about it that way for me is insane. It's like, what are we not seeing behind the surface of like people and their behavior and their actions? There's an experience I had that first triggered this thought that I probably shouldn't share because it's a little bit controversial, but here we go. A long time ago, I went on this double date and I didn't know anybody involved very well. It was sort of this freak thing that happened, but the two girls were friends and I became involved with the girl I was on the date with. And I remember I was with her at one point and her friend called her and asked her where she was and she just straight up lied. Like she was not at home, like she said. And then the girl I was with in return asked, her friend where are you and the girls said she was at home and I immediately became aware that they were both lying to each other and that kind of blew my mind like those are friends lying to each other about what they're doing but even worse than that they're lying to themselves because they're both doing the same thing and they're not catching on to that or maybe they were aware and they just didn't want to think about it but that sort of messed me up for a little while because I'm like what amount of lies are just circulating that I believe right now about people. But after thinking about it for a long time, I think I actually came away from it in a good place. It's kind of a relief to know that people have secrets, you know, like everybody has secrets. The other and more important way to look at it, I think, to quote Master Roshi for the thousandth time, the truth is only painful if you live a life of lies, right? And so I was lying to myself, I think. I was lying to myself that things were the way I see them. It's okay for them not to be. I can't expect to know everything. And all I can do is navigate my own life. And I think the more you keep yourself open-minded, the more you don't assume about people, the better off you'll be and the happier you'll be. I love how her bar just says Madam Christmas on it. That's great. We need a Madam Christmas OVA. He's still in the bar. He doesn't usually spend this much time in there. The woman who owns the bar, Madam Christmas, her real name is Chris Mustang. She's his foster mother. What? Yeah. Maybe we are getting that OVA after all. Just wait till the tearful reunion with her kids. There it goes. My poor little chateau. They just blew that up? That is insane. The dedication. And what about all of the girls that work for you? Of course you're worried about them. Well, don't concern yourself too much. They're off sunbathing in an exotic locale. And I doubt they're thinking of you. <laughs> now get focused. There's too much at stake. You need to be thinking about saving this country. <laughs> Interesting. We're slowly uncovering who the real masterminds of this show are. We thought it was Ed and Al against Bradley, but no. It's Hohenheim against Father. You thought it was Roy Mustang against the world, but no. It was Madam Christmas. It was Madam Christmas all along. And the next time I see you, you better not be inside a body bag and marked as a dissident. I won't be happy with you. <laughs> Madam Christmas's disapproval is worse than death. Guess I better get moving. Full metal Love fine. She deserves it. Aw, crying gluttony. Poor baby. But this is not the end of the sewer adventure. About time, Colonel. Didn't think you were gonna show. You keep up with the smart-ass comments. I'll take them as a sign of confidence. You made sure that you weren't followed? Yes. And if we had been, this little guy would have alerted us. Hayate's the real MVP. You thought it was Riza against the government. Wrong. It was Black Hayate. <laughs> it was Black Hayate all along. <laughs> Good boy. Keep your nose peeled, okay? He is a good boy, isn't he? The Fuhrer's train was destroyed with the Fuhrer riding in it. <laughs> Notice he didn't say Bradley's dead, because he knows better. This is either a once-in-a-lifetime chance, or we're walking into a trap. It's a trap. Bradley's alive, and he's laying low on purpose. Your orders, sir. A lot of pressure. This is basically life Whatever or death. Whatever action we may take, we're heading straight for the battlefield. Right. And no matter the outcome, there's no turning back. This is it, basically. Even if we win, this mission still won't be close to completion. Not until we rebuild this nation. With me as the Fuhrer, we'll still have the task of setting things right. In other words, I'm only giving you a single order to obey. Don't die! I don't know if they can keep that. That's pretty hard. Thomas died. Good to know he cares, though. Damn, Ed. Too good. Winry's auto mail. You thought it was Ed? It was Winry's auto mail the whole time. It looks like I made the right decision by keeping my northern auto mail after all. Yeah. This carbon fiber base has turned out to be pretty handy. I'll say. Back to plan A then. Oh, you had to go there, didn't you? You know, I'm starting to think pride is a real. Ow! I figured this might give me the advantage. Unless you want to destroy your brother. Now, old 
Ultimate light. Clever. No! No! More! No! More! I'm amazed that Gluttony is still alive after all that cutting. That's a powerful Philosopher's Stone. You gotta get him out of here, now! And you're positive he's not still possessed? Yeah, I've noticed that if you sever a part of their body, it disintegrates into dust. Yep. Did you see that bright light, Pride? Huh? <laughs> this is so clever, this whole thing. Gluttony. Huh? How many times have they killed you now? I lost count. But I know it was a lot, though. They've beaten me up pretty badly as well. The way things are going, there's a very real chance they might annihilate us. Yeah, but that's okay, because Father will fix us. What is he doing? Is he gonna, like, take gluttony or something? Please don't do it, Pride! <laughs> that is so sad for gluttony, that's his brother. Oh no! I can't believe I'm having these feelings right now, but I am. Damn. That is insane. R.I.P. Gluttony, I guess. The character I used to hate, but fell in love with. One of his own kind. Ah, this should make things much easier. I can practically smell every movement you make. Alright, so he absorbed his powers, too. Damn, that was nuts. Why do I feel bad? I shouldn't feel bad. I feel bad. That's two homunculi down for good. Three if you count Envy. Although Pride is the ultimate and now he's even more powerful, so... I don't really know the mechanics of this, but it's probably not a big deal for Father that Gluttony's gone, right? Because Pride just absorbed him. So he still has the, the power, right? And we know he can, like, use the things to make the new things. I recognize that scent. You're somewhere close by, aren't you? Hohenheim. Hohenheim to the rescue. Damn, that episode was amazing. They actually really picked up this episode. The more I watch Pride, the more I appreciate his design and him as a villain. It's funny, because I think I said a while back, when Gluttony was uh, absorbing Ed and Ling into his void, I was like, how do you defeat Gluttony? And I thought it would be something like feeding him something bad, or like overfeeding him, or something poetic, you know what I mean? So that was not what I was expecting, but that was poetic in the way I was thinking. He died by being eaten, basically, which is perfect. Similar to the poetic beauty of Envy being defeated while being mocked, and everyone pitying his tiny bug form. Lust, maybe not so much. Maybe Pride will die from being lured in somehow. Lured in to think that he's won leaving him weak and vulnerable. I'm not even sure that Gluttony's dead, to be honest, just because of what we've seen from Father and what he can do with, uh, with Philosopher's Stones. But we're nearing the end of the show, so this just might be how it ends for him. Yes. From what we've uncovered, Mustang's gathered his subordinates and is sneaking around. Mustang's got to have something to do with the Fuhrer's train. Then where do we find him? You're all more experienced with the way this Mustang character operates than I am. Yeah, Father looks bored with politics. If I were in his place... <laughs> nice. Well, I would most likely take the Fuhrer's wife as a hostage. What's she playing at? So he's going to take a pointless hostage and make sure that he's branded as a traitor. Even further proof that humans are relentlessly ridiculous creatures. So is that her misleading them? A red herring? <laughs> or are they actually going to kidnap the Fuhrer's wife? What? Roy Mustang? Sorry to harass you at such a late hour. My apologies. At least she's polite about it. I need you to come with me, Madam Fuhrer. We have no intention of harming you. Please. It's important. What's the game plan? I'm lost. <laughs> Why would they want to take Bradley's wife? I mean, there's insurance against Bradley, because he's definitely coming back. Well, trust in Roy, I guess. He's got to figure it out. But which chess piece is Mrs. Bradley? It's really good that we have all these plans moving, and that we finally know that the real hero of the story is Madam Christmas. There's not that much I can say about this episode as a whole that I haven't already said a lot recently, but the whole thing is just so exciting. It's so fulfilling to have everything be kicked off like this. After all this character building and plotting and scheming and tricks, now, finally, the operations are moving, which is so cool. There's no going back for anybody anymore, and there's also none of this, like, I'm pretending to be on your side, but not really. People have drawn their lines in the sand, with a couple exceptions. Like, Olivier is still, like, a sleeper agent. Grumman's still in the military. But Ed, Al, Roy, this is it. This is the push. And it really is life or death, which makes it just so much fun. But that's the end of episode 48. I'll see you guys next time for episode 49.